Welcome to our presentation. Uh, we talk about challenge six of the GeoHackathon 2019. Um, we were interested in detecting groundwater points for uh, boreholes and wells. Um, we are the team IDIF. I'm Stefan. I'm Ruben. And I'm Christian. And um, yeah, we work with uh, geospatial data mostly. Um, the background uh, that we saw in this challenge is um, food production in Southeast Asia requires a lot of water. It depends um, very strongly on it. For example, when you think about rice production. Um, so irrigation that is required for that um, can be fed by groundwater. So we would be interested in finding suitable uh, groundwater boreholes. Um, and eventually this will um, be aided or supported by precision farming. Our solution to this is a, a mobile or web application which would per, uh, inform potential users on these um, on, on potential locations um, for bore wells. And um, we focus not only on Thailand but also on the neighboring countries. Uh, so now talk a little bit about how we developed uh, this database on boreholes. So um, our workflow is fed by um, open access data collected from a variety of, uh, of online APIs, such as Google Earth Engine, ECMWF, CCI, OpenStreetMap. Um, and then all of this data is used on, um, on a modeling framework that um, estimates potential borehole, borehole locations um, using a, a scoring model, which is coded um, in, uh, in Python uh, as a scalable solution that could be potentially applied to, to the whole globe if you had uh, more computational resources available, and which uses existing citizen, citizen science data like OpenStreetMap data on existent uh, wells to refine our, our mapping application and which then through the mobile app is then reported to potential users. And as you see here on this, uh, on this slide, uh, when you provide this data to the user, the user also has uh, opportunity to, to inform us on the quality of the information provided to, 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 to him and then uh, submits a report on, on, uh, on changes to existing points and maybe information on new points that then is fed to our, to our database and then that information is used to update and refine our map. Now, um, like I mentioned, we use a lot of different uh, data sources um, and we mostly focus on variables that represent um, biophysical conditions like um, uh, soil uh, depth, uh, soil porosity, to get give us information on, for example, how, how likely is that the soil will retain water. Um, and also information on, uh, for example, um, monitoring of what surface water conditions, which will inform us on where water might be found. And of course, information on uh, socioeconomic factors like population density, which will inform us on how likely is that a certain groundwater deposit might be uh, contaminated, which is important when you think about using this water for things like, like crop production. Now, um, that my, my colleague Christian will talk a bit more in detail our users can um, provide new information that we can use to improve our product. If you want to know more about what we did more in detail, then you can consult our uh, GitHub page. And in the meantime, I'm going to give word to Christian um, and he's going to give you a small demonstration of the app. Yeah, this is our entry point. Um, of our mobile and web application, which we called Groundwater Point Portal, uh, where the users can see a list of potential groundwater points in Southeast Asia. Uh, on the left, you get an overview about all the points. And the user gets a nice heat map, first of all, um, of the potential points. 
and we see that in the south of Vietnam there are a lot of locations which have potential groundwater points and when we zoom in to this location, let's say here and let's say we are interested in this point we switch on the satellite map and when we click on it we get the information about the name, the location, the land cover, the maximum temperature, the soil depth, the maximum precipitation and the groundwater probability which is here 78.9% of this location. And my colleague mentioned uh, the citizen science approach and the good thing of this app is that you can add additional groundwater points to the map. And this is what we are doing now. We detect a point and add a groundwater point to the map. You see that the system automatically detects the latitude longitude. We can provide some personal information about us. Uh, we change the name of the country, let's say Thailand, and our organization is not GeoBon, but for testing purposes, let's say borewell drilling services. We can provide a name of the location, let's say it is borewell Sanka district, and we can detect the ground for the probability um, of this area. Let's say for testing it is 82%. And before we submit the point to the, to the map, we can adjust our location. So uh, the point is maybe not here, but maybe here. So we save it and you see that the system ultimately changes its latitude and longitude. Uh, additionally to the information, we uh, submit some images. So let's say we, we choose these two images and now we are all set uh, with our information and we add the point to the map and on the left we can search for our just submitted point. We call it Borwell Sanka District and we get a nice overview about the details which we just submitted, um, the date when it was submitted, the name and our 82% of groundwater probability. Here you can see the two images we just uploaded and yeah that's basically it. The point is now in our database and Yeah, so uh, with this little app, the user gets a nice overview about all the groundwater points in Southeast Asia. Uh, on the top right, you can search for all the points. You can search also for our just submitted point. And yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed the demo. If you have any questions, um, just let us know or visit our GitHub page. All the code is publicly available, open access, and yeah, we hope for some contributions, and thank you for the hackathon, and bye.